Hello everyone. This is Dr. Ritika Gaba, your one and only PhD mentor, advisor and trainer. And today in this video, I'm going to answer a very simple yet a very important question for you all. Who can pursue a PhD in India? Or in other words, what are the eligibility requirements to pursue a PhD in India? I am sure that all of you are wondering why suddenly after so many videos have I decided to address such a basic question. The reason are the changes being done in the PhD guidelines. So many changes have led to a lot of confusion and also raised many questions in the minds of PhD aspirants. Being your PhD mentor, I thought it is indeed my responsibility to resolve all your queries and solve all your confusion. So I'm here once again to empower you with genuine in-depth and well-researched knowledge so that you clearly know the answer to the question, who can pursue a PhD in India? So shall we start today's video and find out the answer to this question? So the apex body which takes all the important decision related to PhD rules which decides what is the minimum standard of pursuing this prestigious degree from who can pursue a PhD to how and what will happen after a student takes admission in a PhD program. What is the selection criteria, whether or not research papers are required, who can become a research guide, what should be the duration of pursuing a PhD. Every detail is decided by this apex body, which is goes by the name of UGC or University Grants Commission. Now, all these rules and regulations related to PhD are released in the form of a document which we know as minimum standards and procedures for the award of PhD degree. Or this for ease, we will be calling these minimum standards and procedures as PhD regulations. Now, all the institutions in India, all the universities in India, which are allowed to award a PhD degree have to follow these minimum standards or the PhD regulations. Currently, all the universities and institutions of national importance are pursuing the 2016 minimum standards and procedures for the award of PhD and MPhil degree 2016 which for ease we will call as the old PhD regulations of 2016. I am sure that all of you are wondering why am I addressing the 2016 regulation as old PhD regulations when they are still being pursued or followed by all the universities and institutions of national importance currently. That is because in March 2022 UGC has released the minimum standards and procedures for the award of PhD 2022 draft regulations. These draft regulations, though not, they have not been implemented currently. However, we are expecting them to be implemented very soon. In fact, any month now. M many times the chairman of UGC himself has spoken about these various changes that have been brought about in these 22 regulations. There have been various newspaper articles on these 2022 regulations as well. And this is the reason that the students are getting confused because they are receiving information both from the 2016 regulation as well as from the 2022 regulation. So in the next section, we are going to clearly tell you what are the eligibility requirements as given in the 2016 regulation and as given in this new PhD regulation or the 2022 regulations. Let us start with the 2016 or the old regulation. In this regulation, the eligibility criteria was very simple. A postgraduate degree with 55% mark and you are eligible to pursue a PhD. Now let us talk about the 2022 regulation. As you can see on the screen, there are three options or three categories of eligibility here. The first is that you can be have a postgraduate degree with 55% marks just like the old 2016 regulation and you are eligible to pursue a PhD. The next is that you can be a four-year graduate with a degree and should have 
a 7.5 CGPA. In case you are not, you have a four graduate, four year graduate degree, but you are, you do not have a 7.5 CGPA, then do you have to do a two year PG course? No. For this, UGC has said that in case you are a four year graduate, then you can do just a one year PG degree course, get 55% marks in that one year PG course and again you are eligible to pursue a PhD. Do you want to know the reason why UGC has allowed four year graduates to pursue PhD in India? I'm sure that all of you must be thinking this has been done specially for BTECs. Yes, BTECs will definitely have an advantage, but not only BTEC, students from all the streams can take an advantage of this new PhD policy. How? UGC very soon is going to make our three-year graduation system into four-year graduation system. Of course, that is will be an optional thing. Not every student has to pursue a four-year graduate system, but yes, you will definitely have an option to pursue your graduation in four years. So whether you are a commerce graduate or a science graduate or an arts graduate, you can also pursue a four-year graduation. The credit system of this four-year graduate program has already been released as draft a few months back. So very soon, students from all the streams and not only BTECs will have the option of pursuing a four-year graduation and then directly after their four-year graduation, they can pursue a PhD in India. Now remember, all these changes that have been done by UGC, whether it is a four-year graduation program or whether it is BTEC to be allowed or your four-year graduates to be allowed to pursue a PhD, has been done in order to incorporate all the suggestion as given by the National Education Policy of 2020. There is another important disclaimer, that is another important thing that I want to let you know before I end this video, that these guidelines that we've spoken about, the eligibility require, requirements that I've spoken about are the minimum eligibility requirements. And every university and institution has been allowed to set up a higher standard, a more tougher eligibility requirement. With this, I end this video. I hope you did like and understand the clarity which I gave you about the 16 and the 22 regulation. If you want to know much more about these 2022 regulations, then you can watch our complete series that we've done on these 2022 regulation, sharing with you the link in the i above. Also, let me know if you want to know about in detail the old and the new PhD regulations about different aspects like how has the duration changed or how has the admission process changed. If you have any other question related to these, then please do post them in the comment section below. That's it from me today in this video. Thank you so much for watching my video. Do like, share and subscribe my channel.